I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really fun video and a great topic uh, I'd like to discuss. And I think uh, a, a guy that I watched a lot uh, really nailed it on the head. And I think it actually is proof and evidence as to why it is so important for a destroyer player. Um, but before we begin, like, subscribe, blah, blah, below. If you see value in the channel, uh, don't forget to smash those buttons at the bottom. Leave a comment uh, We can, what we could do better, what you like. And as always, thank you so much for your support. At uh, 4,000 subs, we'll do another premium giveaway. So let's get right to it. So recently, uh, one of the guys I like to follow, I and mean, I follow a lot of guys, uh, one in particular, uh, Sea Lord Mountainbatten, who uh, did a video just recently. I'll put a link in the description below. If you want to follow his channel, take a look at it. I highly recommend it. He's a pretty good narrator and has been playing this game longer than I have and has a very good perspective on a lot of things. But really just sums up what where these um uh these contributors and video youtubers are actually continuously saying and i've been repeating it over and over again as basically the video was do your effing job right and really if you watch the video it really still boils down to what i've been arguing the whole time is uh that the destroyer player is literally the key component i would have to say the foundation of this game and where it all starts and begins because of the way Wargaming built it. And I kind of have a, say, a good and bad uh, reasoning behind it. One, it is very interesting to play Destroyer for that reason. So WoW's uh, Wargaming does a good job for that. The downside is it's too critically reliant upon having that role because, again, have you noticed that in the game, if you lose your Destroyer on a flank or in any, any given scenario, most likely you're going to lose that battle or lose that flank in general, right? So if I die right here, most likely the alpha cap will lose, will die, and, and just flank or fold or whatever that may. You see it. I, I, and instead of watching just me on this, in this current game, we're playing the gearing, one of my favorite destroyer lines. Um, I've actually taken the legendary mod off, so you're going to see that I'm playing this with a full reload build for torps and guns. So I actually do not, I like it better, and 5.9 concealment is great. You can see it's very effective for what I need to do. We're facing the other gearing right there. Don't know how, exactly how he spotted so far out, but okay um and just look this is one of the roles we're doing right here we're eliminating the other enemy destroyer now watch which side of this map is going to win this engagement with one of the destroyers gone so let's see our goal is to eliminate the gearing right now off the map because if we eliminate this gearing that's one third of their destroyers gone i would say right roughly one third they have four so let's take out one uh, i don't count submarines as destroyers even though they have, um kind of act like one so let's see here. If we can eliminate this destroyer, even if I just like take as much damage as I can off of impossible, this actually will change the turnout of the game drastically. So can we get it? And boom, there he goes. He's down. Look, the entire flank over here has lost the destroyer. Now watch what they have. They actually maybe outnumber us. Uh, the amount of ships they have over here, a well, Castilla, Rupert, Schlieffen, Sevilla, they actually outnumber us in guns and firepower over here. Look, my Thunderer's running away. Adatara is behind the thing. Zao, I don't know what you're doing. Jadon, at least you're supporting me. And the submarine, of course, is a submarine. So they outnumber us, I would say, in uh, numbers-wise. And look what happens to the enemy team right here. And it proves my point exactly. And also to Sea Lords. The, your job as a destroyer player is literally to secure this flank because you do so much. Okay? And because that happens, look at the enemy team now. Look, they're in such disarray. They have no idea what to do. It's almost like as all of a sudden we just pluck their eyes out and they have no idea what to do. They, nobody pushes. Nobody will shoot. Nobody will go in and cap. Nobody will actually use a radar or to go in and hunt the DD down or whatever. It's literally like they just fall apart. Oh, we get a torpedo hit right there. That just sums up your job as a, a destroyer player. You are there to torpedo and put the torpedo threat out there. You may not hit anything, but at least you put the fear of God out there that goes like, oh my gosh. There's a torpedo out, a destroyer out here, and I don't even know what to do, especially a gearing. Whenever I see a gearing out there, I'm like, whoa, he's got torpedoes that can hurt like hell, and, of course, they're difficult to spot as well. So, again, I, also, I got Sevilla here. I know Sevilla has 9-kilometer radar, so I got to get out of here and avoid him as much as possible. So you got, again, you need a PhD level to know all these ships and everything about them, okay, guys? But I've been playing long enough where I know that. Sevilla is right here on the mini-map. See me I'm using my mouse here to show you. Uh, nine kilometer radar because I like Sevilla. I actually have uh, uh, Sevilla. I actually have that ship and I do enjoy it. But I do know that it has a nine kilometer radar because I play it. So I'm going to launch torpedoes in that direction, hopefully getting a free hit off of that. That alone right there is a major, major threat right there. Not only do I get a double whammy of having a submarine, again, 
Big ships also hate submarines for ungodly reasons. I know why. I mean, I hate them as a destroyer player, but big ships also are terrified of submarine players as well because, again, it's so difficult to spot and find them, and without a destroyer spotting them or looking for them, it's very, very difficult. Svea is sitting there, there trying to do the best he can. Again, I always trade like a Svea, like a, a destroyer myself. So this player right here literally has to make up for the slack of not having a destroyer by becoming that destroyer. And I think it does the role uh, for what it's worth decently for for what you can do with it, okay? It's got 9.3-kilometer nine kilometer, 9 kilometer detection. It's got radar, smoke, uh, big gun, Ragnar guns. Essentially, it's acting like a Ragnar that's really bulky, right? So, again, it's trying to be that destroyer role. I understand that. I play it like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well when you have a gearing and a submarine spotting you from the moon. Uh, so that's the downside there. Now, look, they have a superior amount of ships over here, but notice that they're not pushing. Why? It's because there's the threat of a gearing and a sub and a, I'm sorry, not a, a submarine. And look where our ships are. My thunder is in reverse going that way. Uh, Datar is not really doing much. Janan's over here behind an island. And the Zao don't know what you're really doing. Guns aren't really effective anyways, shooting at these angles. So the only person really posing a threat to them is me, the gearing. So what is your job? Now, Sea Lord in the video makes it, my points and analyzes it to the T that I've been saying for so many years. So if you're new to the channel, I'm teaching you how to be a better destroyer player. That's what I focus on because it's a key comp crucial component of the game. I mean, and I'll list them out here for you. Ready? Take a pen and notepad out. And if you're learning this game for the first time ever, you, the destroyer role is what makes and breaks this game because Wargaming built it that way. And I actually sadly have to say it's a downside. But again, if that is the case, here's how to become a good destroyer player and why it's important. One, you go out there and you complete the objectives. What is the objective that Wargaming usually focuses on? It's capturing points, like I'm doing right now in the background. I'm capping a point. Yay. That's the basic goal of the game. The more points you get, you win the game, correct? Short of actually killing all the battleships and ships these days, which does happen, but usually one of the first things you do in the first 10 minutes of the game is secure the points. So I'm capturing a point right now, helping my team do that, okay? Because nobody else is doing it until I did it first. Now, we're also launching torpedoes. As you can see, torpedo threat is number two. I can launch torpedoes from range with the uh, safety of my own cap zone, and I'm not afraid, and I'm gonna probably going to get a hit and probably get a kill, and boom, there it is. The Sevea goes down. I killed a cruiser slash mini de bigger destroyer, whatever. I killed somebody with torpedoes. So here we go. I, sub I, I accomplished one objective, which is securing a cap. And now points are ticking up in our favor into our bank account, right? That's number one. Number two is I was torpedoing from damage and providing that torpedo threat, which you notice pushed everybody away. Literally. I did not shoot my guns or anybody at the big ships. I didn't do anything to the big ships. I literally just threw torpedoes out there, almost like cover fire, and it just scared the crap out of everybody. They ran away. Number three, I'm spotting for my team. Spotting is, as you can see at the top here, this little um, uh, rectangle here, it's a spotting damage. Total damage your allies cause you. Enemy ships spotted by you. You are literally force dealt, uh, Marine Force 1 out there with your binoculars, with your scopes and everything, spotting lasing targets for the enemy. Just like in my job, I actually laze targets, um, and that way I'm spotting for my friendlies and my so-called uh, friendly teams, friendly forces, and so forth, and that allows you to actually put bombs on target, ordnance on target, whatnot. No Notice I'm not firing into my guns, but yet I'm ticking up spotting damage. Why? Because I'm literally that forward observer that is providing information and ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance for my team. And Wargaming, thank goodness, actually rewards the, the shore player for doing that role. Again, that is one of your roles that you're supposed to be doing, which actually makes it kind of enjoyable, fun. Uh, it's kind of like flying, you know, the drone or whatever in Call of Duty and so forth, the spotting and marking targets. I actually enjoy that. It's kind of fun uh, being that supportive role whatever, w without ever having firing your guns. So that is another very crucial component of the game. Notice three ships here. These three big ships out here have no torpedo or sorry, no destroyer support whatsoever. So not only can they counter the DD threat, but they're also getting spotted for free and they have nothing they can do about it. Sad, right? So the Rubric, the Schlieff, and the Columbo, the Castilla, and the submarine over here are all at like the mercy of my friendly ships firing. And I don't even have many friendly ships over here. It's just the Zao and the Janan really firing. Thunder is firing from distance. So I really have nobody over here really that can really put the hate on these three ships. Like these ships could literally steamroll all of us over. But watch what the power of one little destroyer can do to su just suppress an enemy flank, which is again a crutch to the game itself because how powerful can one player be to hold off an entire flank of ships? I think that's a little too, uh, you know, crude, reliant upon that kind of class or, 
I don't want to say overpower. It just breaks the game that way, right? Um, here we go. We're torpedoing. So not only do we cap, we're out spotting. We're ki we killed the DD threat. We counter DDs. We're actually torpedoing to death. We're holding a flank. We're holding an entire area to bay. I mean, we are doing a brunt of the brutal force of work over here, and that is the power of what a store can do to win games. It literally just handicaps an entire team to, look, now the ship has to re-maneuver uh, because of the torpedo threat, now exposing broadsides. Here's another thing I don't think Sea Lord actually mentioned is that Destroyer is the greatest decoy possible in this game where, look, I'm firing now. The Castilla just fired his guns at me, which means he didn't fire at my friendlies. It is a great wild weasel mission where you are getting the enemy to fire at you instead of your team, which is also another thing they count up is called potential damage. Potential damage is the amount of ammunition fired at you by enemy ships, which is awesome. And sometimes, most likely, they're going to miss you because you're a small, nimble destroyer. And look, he even fired in the smoke in the blind. He literally did not have line of sight of me, but he was willing to fire blindly and waste that shot. That means that was one less shot that was able being fired at my friendly team. He paid the price for it, and that's exactly what the destroyer player does. A big, big distraction. Taking the enemy ordnance off the battlefield. And, of course, obviously, we're laying smoke down. Another critical component that a torpedo destroyer, especially the one of the gearing, provides for the enemy team, which is great and competitive and ranked. Um, gearing is one of the best selections for that reason because they can literally conceal the movement of your friendly ships and provide a mobile island that people can hide behind. Meanwhile, they can use their ordnance and uh, their weapon systems to bear on the enemy and just suppress the enemy heavily down, especially for those uh, big cruisers that love to hide in smoke and fire all their guns because they got a better reload, bigger guns. They can just melt battleships and cruisers down with ease, and that is so, so effective. Look at this. These ships are literally just all over the place. They're getting blasted from all around because they're being distracted. They're being torped. They're being... Look, all my torpedoes caused all of those guys to turn and expose broadsides to Zals, Janans, whatever, even bigger battleships, and that right there destroys an entire enemy flank and that's exactly why the destroyer role is so so crucial imagine if i had died you can see what happened because their friendly gearing died and i like the fact that there was a gearing versus gearing there so you can see uh, you know one-on-one -on -one comparison of how important the destroyer player is to just the whole game in, in, in its entirety and I'm glad the other enemy team gearing was on my flank. And I can, you could see that a gearing versus gearing right there, even equal match, right? But unfortunately, their gearing lost that fight. They died. They lost the flank. They lost the advantage. And that, that is why it's so darn crucial. Now, had the tables been reversed, had I died, I'm sure my flank would have folded. With the amount of ships and battleships they had, there is no way I could have secured that flank. So that is the role of the destroyer player. Let's take a look at actually how the gunboat main Look, so that was torpedo kind of main, right? So look at the team. Look, number one on the team. I literally did barely anything other than shoot torpedoes and maybe guns once in a while. But it gets you to that number one spot right there as a destroyer player. I have the least amount of hit points, you know, except for maybe the Bilal. What does Bilal have? I don't know. I forgot. But I got almost the least amount, right? Look at this. Majority damage, torpedoes from concealment, right? Uh, fires, flooding is great. Look at that. Potential damage, 540,000. Spotting damage, 63,000. That's a lot. Capturing points is also you get points for it, ladies and gentlemen. So a lot, a lot of power of what you can do. So let's take a look at another game. All right, so we're going to look at another video right here. Um, just right off the bat, you can see the lineup right now. Now, I'm in a Druid now, pure gunboat, right? And you can see how much power a gunboat can do. And we're the, with the small one, of course, we're going to pair up with the small one, which is great. Again, like I said in my um, previous video, uh, I, uh, and, and not this video, but this video, but the previous video I posted, it literally just talks about I find, if in randoms, I just find, again, we're not communicating very effectively, really, but you can, you know, other people want to do their own thing. I literally just go find a player and hang with them. Nowadays, as a destroyer player, I find another destroyer and I elect to just support them and keep them alive. And I find that find that that works very, very well and effectively because I if I've found that statistically, if you keep all your destroyer players alive, most likely you're probably going to win the game. So what do I do? I keep my destroyer players alive. Unlike other uh, cruisers and battleships, like um, Sea Lord Mountain Batten says, like you're supposed to support your destroyer. Nobody does it, and so I guess I'll do it. You know, there are occasional players out there that will I finally get the whim of a, hey, use your cru radar cruiser to go support your destroyer, kill the other enemy destroyer, and you most likely you're going to win the game. That He mentions that in the video. Go watch it, okay? I put the link in the, down in the description below. The, the cruiser players are literally there to support the destroyer initially. 
But most obviously what? In randoms, of course. And sometimes if I find in competitive, most cruiser players that have radar literally just want to do things for their own. I mean, they, they feel like they're just selfishly just trying to protect their ship because they're afraid they're going to get blapped or whatever like that. And yeah, I agree. So you have to, obviously, everybody has to be careful about being shot at, but not to the detriment of you not supporting your destroyer player. Because why? A, destroy, a radar cruiser especially has the firepower and the radar to really, one, reveal the other destroyer player to help the enemy, to help your friendly destroyers kill the enemy destroyer in the first place, but you also have bigger guns that fire rapidly enough better than battleships to eliminate that destroyer player. I mean, one salvo from a cruiser can literally melt half the, the HP off of an unsuspecting destroyer player. Now, not only does the radar reveal that, it provides situational awareness and reconnaissance so that the other friendly destroyers can eliminate the enemy destroyer that is the key component what did i say the main role of a destroyer player is also to counter other destroyers because if you don't counter them they're going to run the muck amongst all your other bigger ships and that's bad very easy right here right so you're a little destroyer player now what did i do right here and i love this okay wait a kudos to this player right now yumiko hara so wherever you're at yumiko hara i have to show props to you on this video I'm going to put you on this video and just show off that you're a play style. You're an awesome destroyer player, and thank you so much for proving my point. A good destroyer player on a team can literally run amok for the entire team in World of Warships today, 2024, randoms. So, again, this is just randoms. Now, a good destroyer player can also do this in competitive, but that's another video for another day. So what did I do? I literally am just holding formation wingman. Again, I flew formation back in the day as well, so I actually have to... Uh, I, I, I'm familiar with this. You find a reference point, stay in the formation, and stay in, and then a, a good... A solid a column or a offset echelon, whatever you want to do, call it. But you're staying in formation close to your friendly ship, not on top of your ship to give him room to breathe, but also close enough where you you can bear all your weapon systems on an enemy player and maximize firepower so that you have a clear advantage over the enemy. Always, always, always pick an advantage so you win. Never pick a fair fight. It's not fun. You want to pick an unfair fight so you can win the day and always choose and pick your battles wisely. So right after that, what did a good destroyer player do? The small one and I, we did a great job. We secured Charlie Point. Great. Look at that. We did it. Now, what are we supposed to do next? We're supposed to literally fight, figure out how to counter this destroyer over here. We know there's a destroyer here. My RPF is also indicating, you know, okay, now they're capping. So we have an RPF indication showing that he is somewhere along this Charlie Point right here. I know it probably won't be the Napoli. He's probably hiding behind rocks or something. So guess what? Me and the small one are. We're going on a hunting uh, hunting a um, safari hunt right now for the destroyer and eliminating the destroyer will literally help us out so much. Yeah, Napoli definitely didn't go in and cap, so there's something big out there. We check the the, uh, the lineup. Yep, Ragnar. So here it is, two versus one. Who's got the fair fight here? So right now we're going to shoot as much as we can, plowing all that AP damage into that. Look at the amount of damage we're putting in the Ragnar. He has no help whatsoever, and see, this is exactly why bad players on the other enemy team not supporting your destroyer player is bad. You'll notice the Ragnar here has nobody else supporting him as well. Maybe Lucian way off in the distance there, but that it doesn't help you at all if you're so far away you can't hit anything. So right now, putting the hate on the Ragnar right there. Way to go. I'm also popping smoke to clear to cover my friendly Smallin, and that is another good tactic to do is to help your team out. Ragnar pops the radar, so we know that's coming, but let's see if we can melt this guy. Come on, baby. What are we doing? Why can't we hit this guy? Holy crap, Why are, we are a bad shot today. I'm so sorry, folks. I mean, that, that's just me being a bad player right there, but we did the best we could. Smallin, thank goodness, actually pops his Raider. Way to go, Smallin. And here we go. Can we get this final shot? Oh, he went off. Okay, 7.5 kilometer radar didn't uh, last long enough and have the range enough to last for us to shoot. We're just blind firing at this point, hoping we get a free kill. Okay. Look what we did right there. We were able to defend the cap as well. Another point a destroyer player is good at is defending the cap. We are securing points for our team. The points are ticking up in our bank account because of the destroyer players are protecting Charlie, where none of our other teammates are doing. You notice that? You see a trend here? Other battleships and cruisers are very bad at doing everything else. They're just sitting in the back waiting for the perfect shot, and I don't know why that is. Again, I think Sea Lord Malman talks about, hey, battleships, you're supposed to use your arm, your your tankiness to support and take damage and just provide that threat and just secure an area. Unfortunately, a lot of players aren't doing that nowadays. Again, I digress. This is about destroyer gameplay. You want to win the game, pick a destroyer and be really, really good at it because you are going to run amok of the other team with the firepower you're seeing right before you. 
Another good thing is the DPM and the firepower, which means damage per minute. The amount of damage you can put out in a minute is very, very good. And, and it's just, I just like the reload rates on the destroyer roll because it, I just like to see guns firing all the time. Less than two second reloads is great. I love seeing that. Battleships, it does take a while to reload. You're, getting, you're talking about like 25 seconds, 30 second wait times. If you miss your shot, you're waiting a long time for reload, and I hate that. I used to enjoy it, uh, battleships, but that's when the secondary battleships come into play, and that is another thing for battleships. Again, I don't think that it, they're, they're obsolete now to push in, because battleships just get melted down nowadays, and the higher tiers, it's just not as fun and engaging, and I think that's why a lot of battleship players hang in the back, and they're kind of ineffective nowadays. So what do destroyer players do? We go out lead from the front, right? So let's take a look. So we're going to run a run down to Charlie. We're not going to play a Charlie more. We've already got it. And uh, let's see here. Petri is actually pushing in for once. Finally, a good uh, battleship player pushing in. But unfortunately, you're going to see because the Petri push in in World of War and World of Warships and Wargaming's idea is that to melt battleships pushing in because that's the meta. I mean, technology has basically come to the point where it's almost impossible for a battleship to effectively push in and not sustain massive amounts of damage. So here we go. Eliminating. Here's our other role as a destroyer player. As a gunboat DD, you're there to blow up other uh, and encounter the other destroyer player role. There they go. They lost their destroyers. So we're taking their destroyers one at a time, one by one. And you're going to see their team start to start falling apart when they lose all their destroyers, right? So let's take a look. Who's the threat now? The threat is right now is the Patree, which is pushing in. You can see right here, Patree's pushing in with his engine boost. He's going really, really fast for some reason. And uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't even know. if it, Does the Patree have an engine boost? Let me look. Uh, Yes, they do. They have an engine boost. So there, he's coming real, real fast. So we're going to take this opportunity to melt as much damage as I can. Now, this is the reason why I like gunboat destroyers. We have high rates of firepower that are just pushing a lot, a lot of hate downrange, a lot of ordnance downrange, a lot of damage downrange. That's why I really, really enjoy about destroyers. And again, you got the gunboat main. It really is awesome because I can be consistent about the amount of damage per second per minute on a destroyer. I'm sorry, on a battleship or a cruiser. And it's just devastating. And now it even distracts the battleship player. almost flusters them because they're like, I got to shoot at this guy. Now, notice the enemy is shooting at me in, in smoke. They're willing to blind fire in smoke. That tells you how crucial a destroyer shooting in smoke, especially a gunboat in smoke, is devastating because they people are seeing, like, man, this, this smoke cloud is just melting my team. I've got to shoot at them, even if I have to blind fire. Now, we made a mistake right here. Our concealment was too close for the Patrice, so we had to get out of smoke. My smoke dissipated too quickly for me to get out of dodge, so we're going to have to run away, maneuver, and thank goodness they are taken down. Satsuma is now blasted from our uh, friendlies. And now what is our goal right here? We've got Alpha and we have Charlie. And now we're going to try to secure Bravo and see if we can actually effectively push it. I think Smallin is pushing a little too aggressive with the Napoli in range and getting spotted. So we got to make sure we cover our Smallin. I don't want him to get spotted or taken out. We have a smoke ready to go. We also could help fire and distract. Here's another good destroyer player uh, play right here. Distract the enemy team so your enemy team is not focused on. Notice that the Napoli stopped firing at the small end now. It is now more focused on me, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. I pop smoke. They're all focused on me now. I'm now nosed in tanking as best I can. I got the torpedoes uh, spotted with my hydro, which is another good thing to have hydro on your gunboat destroyer so that you could spot these torpedoes without taking unnecessary damage. Okay, so we're also doing another roll here. We're spotting for our team. We come out of our smoke. We spot for our team. We counter the destroyer play. We actually, uh, there's the other destroyer. Now, I elect not to shoot because if I fire, my smoke is not on cooldown right now. I do not want to uh, fire without having the cover of smoke at my um, at my uh, discretion. We put out the fire to not get spotted again. Once you get catch on fire, if you didn't know, your uh, spotting range increases because somehow fire is more noticeable all of a sudden, right? All right, our enemy team, look at that. The destroyers are actually running the muck amongst the other team. The other team's losing their destroyers. They only have two to our three, and notice their team is slowly melting away. Because of that that crucial destroyer role, they have to have counter DD play. They have to have torpedoes that are effective. They have to have someone going out their spot. They have to have someone going out there to cap. They don't have that right now. Look, their Lucian is running away in the back. Their Shimakaze is pretty much useless at this point, other than just being concealed and torping because there's not enough HP to move around. And now I'm going back and finding my Smallin, and I'm going to go support him. If you have a Hunter Pack, Hunter DD Killer uh, a pack of Destroyers like this, there's almost impossible to defend against because when you have coordination with two destroyer players that are literally with one objective in mind is going down there to hunt the destroyer or hunt down dds and just kill them and just go out and cap and work together it is really devastating i'm not going to say 100 percent but it is powerful so we have small and radaring the shimikaze who's in the smoke defenseless nobody's spotting for him he has nobody to spot for him until he comes out of the smoke 
He is now defenseless. No, he's in a smoke. Nobody's spotting. And now we're just going to fire all the AP into him. Boom, he goes down. Splash one for us right there. Look at the destroyers. They're almost all gone, and there's nothing they can do. Lucian's might as well be out of the game. He's so far in the back. He's pretty much uh, worthless and useless at this point. So, again, why is the destroyer counter uh, role so important? Because it literally puts the team, the enemy team at bay at in an ineffective use, almost to the point where you might as well surrender because they have no way to spot, see, torp, do anything. And it is really devastating on the team. And I think it's so crucial. If you don't have a good destroyer player team role, like you just saw in the previous games that I'm talking about, and even see Lord Bound Bound's videos, it literally handicaps an entire team this game, which means that the Wargaming has put a significant burden on just one type of class of ships, which makes the other ships almost irrelevant. Like I said, the battleship gameplay lately, I've noticed, has become definitely, definitely obsolete. So here we go. One-on-one -on -one with the Lucian right here. I notice his back turret has uh, has to show a lot of uh, angle, no, or sorry, no angle, in order to mitigate the damage he's receiving by me. Unfortunately, he now has cut his uh, DPM in half because one gun only firing is 50% less than two. So here we go. We're going to just take the, the hate to him. Unfortunately, he's also taking fire from our small, and this is why it's so, so effective and important that you work together with another destroyer player. Two guns is better than one. Boom, right there. Way to go, small, and kudos to you. Plus one support and commented and complimented you on that. That is exactly why destroyer game play is so freaking important in this game and almost to the point of the detriment of the rest of the classes of the ship. Right there, at, um, 65,000 damage. We didn't do much. We defended a lot right there. See, defending and capturing points is the name of the game. And because we did that, we're in the top of the team with the small number there. Destroyers being in the top of the game rather than other bigger ships that would you would think would be more of an impactful role. Man, I'm telling you, the destroyer gameplay is so powerful. Look, potential damage up in the 700,000s. Spotting damage, over 100,000 spotting damage. Incredible, crucial role that the destroyer player has. So like I said, let me know your thoughts and in, in, in the comments below. What do you think? Is this? Am I hitting the right note here? Is Sealer Mountain Bound talking about the right thing? His video sums everything up that I just said perfectly. The Destroyer is so critical component to the detriment of the game itself, where you literally do almost everything to the point where you're actually making other ships come almost worthless, and it almost it handicaps the other team because once you lose a Destroyer player, it's game over after that majority of the time. So, as always, hope you guys see value in the channel. Like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the support. As always, hope you guys are doing well. Say hi to me when you're out there. Take care. Cheers.